Yep, live fundraiser to ACLU. Oh, very good. Ooh, I'm looking a little rough today. I think Hi guys. Yeah, search with me. Oh my god. Hi everyone. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. Um, so as you guys know, today is going to look a little bit different than usual. Um, we are still drinking wine and that's okay because we should always be drinking wine on Wednesdays. It's a tradition. But we do have a special guest joining us today. So we're kind of, we're going to skip over what we usually do, which is talk about the wines for usually about 15 minutes and then we like get into our guest. But today we're going to kind of ixnay all of that and we're going to head right to our guest. So um, Wendell will be joining us um, and we're just going to dive right in. Wendell, I think you're on here. Let's see if we can grab him. wonderful he's so good he like knew what he was doing i was I know, we didn't have talking to, to him earlier party. and i'm like wendell points you know? yeah props for he just probably has perfect wi-fi hi too. hey hey no i don't have perfect wi-fi actually <laughs> What's we going were on, making guys? fun of all of our guests because their wi-fi is so janky and we're like where did you how, why is your wi-fi so messed up but you I'm are the, great i'm the king of janky wi-fi and it's it was it's like pouring in philly so yeah. Uh, you're going to have to bear with me a little bit, but. We'll struggle through this Wi-Fi connection together because I'm sure at some point it will get a little crazy. Um, yes, I'm but, sure. Uh, already we are up to four donations and we've raised $45 and we are three minutes in. So. That's great. So good. But I just want to start off by saying, A, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm very, very happy to have you here. And also, thank you everybody for tuning in. Um, we will be talking about everything going on in the world, but also we will be fundraising for ACLU. Um, and we think we've kind of looked through actually all of our options. And there are so many great places to donate, which we'll touch on a little bit later in the live. Um, but we just decided that this is a really viable option for everybody. And we think it encompasses all the things that we're looking for through this donation. So um, we'll start off with a cheer. Yes. Cheers to being together, even though we're apart. Cheers. And I guess we'll dive in. We're already up to $170 in donations. I'm so impressed. That's can great. You, can I see the donations or do you want me to read them back to you? I can see them right there. Okay, um, great. Yeah, so I can see them. Cool. Okay, great. So um, I guess we'll just talk about it. How are you yeah. feeling with everything right now? How am I feeling? Um, it's been a tough I mean, it's been a tough few months with the pandemic and then add to that um, all that's been going on in the country these last couple of weeks with the um, the killings of some unarmed black men um, and women, Bre Breonna Taylor as well. And it's just been, there's been so much. And I think that the country, um, a lot of the country has hit kind of a, a, a bubbling point, a boiling point. And now we're seeing protests, and um, I think I think people are demanding justice. And fortunately, we're making a little bit of progress. Because um, uh, what 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 was he? Uh, they raised it to second degree murder, I think, um, for Derek Chauvin. Um, and they finally said that they would um, they would charge the other three with what is it, aiding and, and abetting a murder. So fortunately, um, these protests haven't been in vain. If you ask me, I think that we've achieved something, but ultimately, hopefully this brings about real change. And, um, and thankfully, I'm seeing a lot of people that um, are becoming allies and are finally opening their eyes to this, this way of life that someone like me, I live it every day. I'm a black man in this country and I've, I've seen and felt so much and for me to just speak about it, because a lot of people know me as Wendell from Survivor, but growing up where I grew up, um, I was profiled many times, numerous times. I have so many stories um, about it. And I'm just, th these stories um, that we see on the news, they could be me. I see myself in these people so often. And that's why it, re it really like touches me to the core because I'm like, man, um, in Ahmaud Arbery's case, 
I love I love running. I'm a runner, and that could happen to me. Uh, some people can can kill me uh, for that. Or in um, George Floyd's case, um, I've I've interacted with the police, and I must say, sometimes I'm not always I'm not always in the best of moods. And for me, no matter if I say something wrong to the police, to where they feel like they need to be aggressive towards me or something, because you know, as a black man, if you get pulled over or if anything happens to you, sometimes you're a little on edge. Sometimes you're scared or or whatever, and um, it's it's sad to think that you know if if I say the wrong thing or if I don't, I can still be murdered by the police. So um, where I am right now, uh, like I said, it's a tough time, and I'm just trying to continue to speak out, continue to use my voice, and um, continue to try to educate people, the people the the people that I can reach, and let them know that this is something that really happens. It's a real problem, and um, try to help find constructive ways to, to get past this issue. Well, I think following you on social media and just knowing you as a person, I think you have done a really good job of um, talking about these topics in a way that reaches a lot of people. And I'm, I'm genuinely grateful to have you on today because I just know that you'll, ab you'll be able to connect with the people who are watching and maybe if they didn't understand before maybe this will be the catalyst to help them understand what their role could be you know obviously coming from um my position which has never been i've never walked in your shoes i've never felt the things that you've had to experience and you know your past history so i think it it's really beneficial to come on here and talk about what we can do together in coming from my position coming from your position and just be able to raise awareness on how we can move forward and we have the momentum we have the traction and now it's about getting everybody else on board and and using this to do, you know to to make it real lifestyle change for everybody absolutely i appreciate you michelle because um you do have a big heart and um, you're so empathetic to the cause and you're able to just try to soak in as much information as, as you can. And you're also able to use your platform and you've been speaking about it. And I thank you for that. And I thank you for remaining, um, maintaining an open mind and trying to learn more and allowing yourself to learn more. I think any intelligent human being should be able to change their mindset once they're given new information. And um, I did a podcast with Russell Hans like last week, and he he really changed his mindset about a lot of things, including um, pol police brutality, including Black Lives Matter. I I'd love to touch on uh, Black Lives Matter, and for pe for people to allow themselves to change when they you know open their eyes and clearly see that there is something wrong, that's when the country can change. So I thank you for. I mean, you've always been a great person, but I thank you for allowing yourself to learn more and um, and using your platform. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm so grateful that we're able to do this because I feel like this week it's been it's been interesting. I've never been really in a situation where I felt I've wanted to help so bad, but I've never I felt a little bit stuck as to what I could do. I really did feel that way in the beginning. I started to to feel like I want to speak out, but really what what can I say about something that I've never been in that position before? And a lot of people started to post all of these things. Here's how you can be part of it, even if you've never, if, even if you, you know, without feeling guilty, but feeling like I can be an ally. And so there's so many resources out there for us to digest. All we have to do is take the time and really educate ourselves. And so I think that it's been amazing. The fact that yesterday we could see all the black squares and we could, we've seen everybody kind of shut down all of their personal social media to get behind one cause. I love it. And I'm, and I'm grateful that this is being brought to a front. I think it's time. And, um, and it, it took a really horrible, a series and years of really horrible um, kind of oppression to get here, but we're here. And if we can all stand together, I think that we're, 
we can really, really move the needle. And, and I, I just want to be part of it with you. So I agree. It's almost like the perfect storm. You have COVID, you have a lot of people at home, um, just, just being at home and people are getting cooped up and people, some people are on edge and people are whatever. A lot of people are home. So it's almost like there's a captive audience. And then for something like the incidents to happen um, with George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and um, Ahmaud Arbery, for them to happen so close together, be recorded. Thank God for cell phones. Um, I think, I think that I, I don't want to call it a perfect storm because it's 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 horrible things that are happening. We're in a pandemic. That's horrible. Black people are getting killed on a by a disproportionate on a disproportionate basis. That's horrible. But you combine these two things and now you have a lot of people that are willing to that can see it and that are willing to jump and ready to do something about it and um, risk their lives by getting out in the streets, first of all, during a pandemic um, and also risk their lives because the the constant clashes with the, the police and the militarized police force that we've seen. Um, it's 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 hard to watch, uh, but it's also it's it's a beautiful thing to see so many people and so many different people coming together for a cause and um, understanding that there is a real problem. So I'm thankful for it. Uh, we have a very long way to go, but, um, but I'm here to help you. And also, I don't know everything by, by any means. I know that I, uh, I can speak my truth and I can speak the things that I've, that I've experienced and the things that I've seen and the research that I've done. Um, I don't know everything, so I encourage everyone to go to external resources as well. But uh, we'll try to get through things. We'll try to get through some questions and everything to, to yeah. just try to shed light. I think that's actually a really good point is that we can never believe that we know everything, right? Like we need to keep educated. We could be having these conversations. And sorry, I'm just going to pause really quick because we did hit the 2000 uh, mark in donations. Oh, wow. So I just want to say thank you, everybody, for donating. Let's keep the traction. I love it. I think I am just, I'm, oh my God, we are only 13 minutes in and we've hit $2,000. I'm. That's amazing. Maybe we can hit uh, 5,000 tonight. Maybe we can hit 5,000. What that happens? That would be great. Well, I don't know. We're going to, well, we're going to hit, we're going to hit 5,000. Let's hit 5,000. Let's yeah, eat. That's it. We're going to um, hit 5,000. But I do think it's really important to know that we don't know everything and let's continue to educate ourselves. Let's continue to open up these conversations. I have to say, it's been really interesting. I've, I've had conversations with people who I haven't talked to in a while. I've had conversations with people from college, pe people from pre-college, people from my family who usually we don't have conversations because maybe our, our backgrounds are a little bit different. You know, my, my father is a cop actually. So for to open up those conversations and to be having really in-depth uh dynamic conversations about what is going on from his perspective, from my perspective. It's really, it's been eye opening. And I think all we can do is continue to talk and continue to keep that line of communication open so that we can understand each other better. And so that ultimately we can really do something to change the world for the better and to, to make, you know, black people heard and feel just as valued as they should be. And, that's really the goal. And I think these conversations are so important and we should continue them. I agree. I have a question for you, if you don't mind me asking, um, what's, what's your father's take? Because I, I didn't know, did I not know that he was an officer? Um, and if well, I didn't, then how, I, how does he feel about things? Yeah, so my dad retired probably maybe five, five years, years ago, five years maybe ago. Maybe 10 now. Um, but he was a captain actually. And so his take on it, I mean, me and my father called him one night, literally both in tears, just distraught. And we wanted to, we both wanted to speak up because obviously we are very empathetic people, but we also want to be understanding that there's, there's always going to be maybe another side. And so we wanted to talk. We wanted to talk to him really openly about his perception. He said, listen, just like with any profession, there are good people and bad people. And the, the role of a cop is 
to, to be a good person and to step in to situations that are challenging for people and do the right thing. They're, they're supposed to be beacons of safety, security, and comfort. That's really what cops are there for. They're supposed to be the good guys coming in at the end of the day. And he says, he said basically that unfortunately, if there's one bad egg, it can sometimes poison the whole, the whole yeah. thing. And he, you know, also feels like the other men should have stepped in and said that this is a bad situation. He gave us situations <coughs> actually personally where somebody did something that was not the right thing and somebody else in his workforce actually stepped in and said, no, you're handling this wrong. And so he's, he gave me some like real, sometimes it's hard to actually connect things that you see online, personal, um, experiences so to hear him use his own personal experiences for 20 plus years <coughs> in the workforce was really interesting but my dad is the most empathetic human ever and i think that that's where we got it from and i know i know in my heart that not all cops are bad and their hearts are for the most part in a good place and because i just have been a, i know my father and i've never doubted that you can you can you can in my opinion have wonderful cops who want the right thing and not one or I don't think you have to choose one or the other. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. It's, I, okay. I, um, that's okay. Um, I, I can say, I, I do truly believe, and I know your father, uh, I know that there are good cops for sure. Um, I've said this before from, from my experience, I haven't had many interactions with good cops, especially out in practice. Like if I am, if I'm pulled over, I, I used to like my buddies when I was in high school, uh, I guess as a, when I was a junior over the summer before senior year, some of my buddies went to Penn State for summer study. And uh, I recall one time me, my boy Dame and my boy Rohan were driving up to Penn State for the weekend because that's what we would do. And we got pulled over. Um, three black kids in there, you know, 17, 16 years old. And the cop came up to us with his gun out in his hand. And that's, that's petrifying. What does that do to a, to a 17, 16 year old? Um, and he said something to the tune of because Rohan, who was the youngest guy, he didn't have his ID. He said something like he could arrest him because he didn't have his ID or something like that. Um, I've had instances being pulled over all across where I grew up, Lower Marion, and uh, so I, I, although I haven't had many positive experiences with officers, I have met some and I understand that some, some are good and I can't call all bad because I'm, I'd, I'd be a fool to say all officers are bad. But what I will say is when you have um, a small amount of bad cops amongst a whole large group of good cops and those good cops aren't willing to step in, then you have a, a total group of bad cops. If you're if you're asking me, um, I think about the instance with uh, with George Floyd. There were four police officers. I'm willing to call all four of those police officers bad right now. In that instance, all we needed was one good officer, just one good right. officer to say, "Hey, chill out." And similarly to if there's one bad cop, it can you know spoil the whole bunch. I feel like that one good cop would have saved him. And this is when I start thinking like, man, I wish I was talking to an officer. Um, we had we have officers on our cast. I'd love to speak to any Listen, of them. I, I can put you in touch with my father. And I'm sure he would be happy to talk to you on okay. a personal level, like just to talk about it. Because I do, I really, I truly believe that having conversations is going to be what changes things. I think opening up conversations so that my somebody who is a cop can hear from somebody from your perspective who's only have had negative, for the most part, negative experiences. And from my father's perspective, who's been advocating for good, I think I, I can speak to my father. I've always seen my father advocate for good. So I think it, it opening up conversations like that. And you said it too. We have, we have cops on our cats, you know, who that's, yeah. I've gotten some text messages. You, you um, have some messages? 
Yeah, I mean, I've gotten messages from them, but you know, I I I want to talk to people. I want to yeah. I want to feel them out and see what's really going on. I think we should. I mean, I called. I've called people. I've definitely called people on our cast. I've I've talked to. Um, I talked to Nick. I've talked to people on our cast just to pulse on what's. Going. It's important to to check the pulse on everybody and not 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 just cops not just people not just black people i think we have to check the pulse on everybody and see where they stand in this on this right. position how we can educate, how we can learn from other people but how we can also educate other people i think it's absolutely critical um i sorry, love just to pause really quick we've reached three thousand three hundred and fifty nine in donation oh, wow Wow. Holy crap. <laughs> That's great. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for donating to the ACLU. Um, keep donating. We're going to, we're going to hit 5,000 tonight. That, that's going to be amazing. But uh, let's, let's keep talking. Um, you, you briefly mentioned Nick and I want everyone to hear this. I've said it a couple of times. I um on the call beach. So we'll segue a little into survivor. So you guys can get your survivor talk on the call beach. Uh, there were a lot of great times and there was one, there were a lot of fun times because we did, we were winning and we had crazy characters. We had Tony and Tyson and, you know, it was a great time. But there was one very serious moment when Nick started speaking about police and how as a public defender, how he viewed police. And he was talking to Sarah Lucina and he was basically saying how cops are crooked and blah, blah, blah. And as a black man on that beach, I understood where he was coming from. And, but I just sat back and I, I just listened because I was playing Survivor and I tried to stay away from race and away from politics in the game of Survivor. And I also didn't think that, I didn't think that a conversation on race might even make it. Um, that said, excuse me, on that beach, I slowly gained more trust with Sarah Lucina and I started seeing her as a person, I definitely came in with preconceived notions and things that I've heard from how she played on Game Changers and all of that. And I came in there with one view of her and she just, um, her actions on the beach kind of showed me, allowed me to connect with her as a, as a person on a human level, which is the, the way you should connect with people. And so after I heard that conversation with Nick, where he was basically like just talking about police, you know. Um, and then I, I figured, man, I've connected with Sarah Lucina. This is a, a tricky topic for me to navigate, um, being the only black man on that beach. But this is something that I'm willing to, I'm willing to go on a limb and have that conversation with her. So later that day, I was um, down by the water and she came down and I basically said, hey, Sarah, um, this isn't, really survivor play or survivor anything. Um, but this is me talking to you as a human being. I want you to understand my experience as a black man um, compared to your experience as a white lady officer. And she was talking about her, um, how in her department, they, they, don't have, they don't have these police brutality instances. They, she's from a smaller town and she said that they get reprimanded if they use profanity. They get reprimanded if they run, run lights. So when I heard that, I drive around Philadelphia and I see cops turn on their lights, run a light and keep it going. I see cops, they don't even turn on the light and they run lights. I've, I see police brutality. I know that this happens. Sarah came from a place um, and I, had, I took her for her word, no matter what people may think. She said she doesn't see that these things go on. It could be um, her the algorithms on her Instagram and her Facebook, whatever. She doesn't see these things. As a black man with the people I connect with, I see these things on like a monthly basis. I see police brutality videos. This is a real thing. Because she voiced that she does not see this, I just told her my perspective and I said, hey, look, Sarah, this is, this is what I see. If all cops were like your, uh, your district and they all, you know, adhered to every rule and they couldn't do certain things and there was a lot of uh, oversight and whatnot, that might not happen. But in my world, this happens, this um, 
people are, are killed and brutalized on a disproportionate ba basis than, than white people. And it's something that is plaguing the black community. And it is something, it's like a weight. It's like a literal weight that is on our community. And I just wanted to share that with her um, as unpopular as it might be in the game of Survivor. This is what I just, this is how I opened up to her. Um, and it was a powerful moment. And then I had a confessional about it. It was not shown, um, but it was something that I, I wanted to speak to her. I, I didn't want to speak to her about, but I ended up speaking to her about it. It would have been a powerful moment. I think it's so pertinent right now. I mean, so much with, with what's I, going on. I, I hate to cut you off, but I think it's really interesting that you say that it wasn't shown, right? Because, I mean, me and you have talked a lot about this. And, and uh, I, I do want to delve into Survivor just really briefly. Survivor, as we know, is a micro micro what's it called microcosm micro, microcosm of america yeah microcosm of america right and so we see it thank you thank you That's so much word. for your help just give me a, like you know you gotta help me out sometimes i'm not eh. i know what i mean but i don't know how to say what i mean i got you, you know what I'm, I'm yes i'm here for you <laughs> okay anyways moving on what what i what i wanted to touch on was that I feel like Survivor has done a really good job of uh, touching on gender gender biases, right? At, at least as of late, probably since Angelina and the jacket, me and you were talking about this, earlier, or since Angelina came in and, you know, it was a really dominant personality. And then we see everything go on um, in Island of the Idols. And then we see things going on this season with Alicina. So they do a really good job of t talking about this gender bias, but what do you feel that Survivor has, how do you feel about Survivor and, and maybe racial bias? I feel like there has been a very disproportionate member of people who are voted off very early, pre-merge, et cetera, a disproportionate member of uh, or relationship with uh, winners who have won with diversity. So I'm just curious to see your take on, on yeah. that. Yeah, so as you said, Survivor is a microcosm of, America, and that's why you're able to get this this pretty good cross section of Americans in the game. And um, over time, and Survivor hasn't been the best at it, but it's gotten better at speaking to societal issues. And um, like there was a powerful moment in Game Changers with Zeke and Varner. And then, like you said, Angelina, she vocalized the fact that women. Uh, find idols and whatnot way less than men. And she kind of spoke this into existence where you start seeing women, um, they start telling the stories of very strong women and women finding things and women leaving the camp and going to do their thing and women playing the game hard. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Love that. I love that for us. Yeah. Start yeah. showing, yes, let's show more than this. Sorry, I'm going. Right, I yeah, love, I'm, a, love, I'm a proponent of that. Because it was so long, not that. And that, that was frustrating for us. So I can, if that's how I feel, being a woman, I can only imagine what a woman of color might feel, what a man of color might feel. If that's even a, a little smidgen of how I feel as somebody coming into the Survivor game, I can't even imagine the yeah. that, that you so might so we still like they they've touched the women thing um they they've started like becoming more cognizant of, of the fact that women aren't finding uh, idols or, or advantages or whatever they start things happen now women are are finding them and it's a beautiful thing although we still i don't know in the last however many seasons how many women winners we've had there's there's still a disconnect right um so there's still more work to do Yes, but, there's so much to do. and honestly, we've touched on that. And um, I do encourage anybody who is curious about gender bias on Survivor. We touched on that in our, our last few episodes. So we've right. we've been talking about the Survivor. Survivor, it's crazy that it really is like touches on these these things that we see in society and mirrors. Except, it. what's that? I said, except they like, so like they touched. Um, yeah, except. That, yeah, it's, it's been a, it's been something that it's, it's nothing new. And black survivors have been speaking about this since the beginning of the game, how 
um, we're underrepresented and people question the storytelling of black survivors because we don't have a lot of storytellers. We don't have a lot of um, producers. How many black producers did you see out there, Michelle? None. And for a, right, and for um, a producer to understand, it does something when you can have someone that has actually lived your experience be one of the storytellers on the island. So that's that's another thing that that is one of my qualms with the show. Um, I love the show and I appreciate it, but it it certainly has its flaws. And I think the lack of um, black producers or people in production, I don't know where, I don't know where they are, or they aren't. I just know that I saw a lot of, I saw a staff of many races, but the people taking the notes and whatnot, I didn't, I didn't see, or I don't know many, um, Michelle. I, I, I remember seeing maybe one person on the crew, maybe definitely one. Not on the crew, on the crew, you know, like the, the there were camera crews, like, there, some of my my bros are on the camera crews and whatnot. But people who, yeah, I think people who are documenting what's actually going on. True. Yes. So true. that's that's but where I think we need more representation. Do you, do you think that that? Wait, hold on. Sorry, we did reach over four thousand. So I just want to touch on that really quickly. I'll drink to that. Thank you guys so much for donating to the ACLU. This is amazing. We're gonna hit five thousand tonight. And uh, it's 8.32, and we've reached 41, 27, 87. That's amazing. Amazing. Okay, so I just do want to talk about, I want to, but, like, mainly, what, why do you think that, I mean, it, we, it's no secret that minorities tend to get voted off kind of earlier in Survivor, yeah. and it's a little bit harder. Like, I, I feel like there might be something there. Do you, is that something that you feel? Yeah, so I don't I don't know what it is, but we've seen minorities get voted out early on shows, not just Survivor, um, and targeted, or in our case on Winners at War, as soon as Jeremy and I were on the same island together, we were targeted, and that's why why are we targeted? Why there were so many other stronger connections that lasted. You introduced me to Jeremy, you know, like there were connections from well before I even knew him or well before his season that were out there. But for some reason, me and Jeremy get on the same island and we last one day together because they vote me out the next day. So, um, And as somebody who knows you on the island, I you were even considering whether or not you'd even want to work with Jeremy. It wasn't like a shoe in you work with him. I think that's how it was painted, but I don't think it was like that. But anyway, sure. I digress. I think, you know, I think it's, I don't, I don't really know what to say about Sur Survivor hasn't really spoken up a ton about CBS has spoken up about what's going on. I haven't specifically seen Survivor speak up about it yet. Um, and yeah. I, hopefully look forward to that happening soon, sooner rather than later. I'd love to see a statement from someone um, survivor related about what's going on in the country. I'd love to see it um, for them to show support. I didn't say this earlier, but I, I think it's never too late to see what's going on, understand and change your perspective and take a stand because you never know what that ripple effect can cause. And so whether it's someone just tuning into our lives saying, you know what, I heard something powerful. I now, my perspective has changed a little bit. I'm going to use my voice, uh, whether it's someone watching our live or whether it's one of the producers of the show or the official account or anything like that. I don't think it's ever too late to, to say something, to say what's right or do what's right. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Did you have anything specifically? I know we had a ton of questions, but if there's anything specific that you like wanted to touch on first before we kind of talk a little bit about some of the stuff going on. Let's, uh, let's get into some, sorry, my Alexa just talked over there. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into some questions. Okay. So a lot of people were talking about yesterday with um, Blackout Tuesday, you know, the squares. So there's been a controversy over it. 
And I think in general, I think it was really great to see a collaboration of a lot of people just cutting off what they usually put out into the world to all put one thing out. But it seems that there was maybe some back and forth. What is your take on, um, on that? My take on that, um, first and foremost, and my take on that is I, tr I believe that some people did it as a trendy thing to do, but at the, at the same time, I think the message was communicated that like, this is what we're doing. We're blacking out Instagram. And if people can understand the why and understand that it's time to listen and time to do your research and time to donate or time to support a black business or research black businesses or understand what black people are going through in the country, then they made a productive use of that. Um, I know that I said something on my, on my Twitter, I said something like, um, all of a sudden, a lot of my reality friends have black squares on their, uh, on their Instagrams or something like that, because I haven't seen people being vocal about it. And I, again, I'm not perfect. And I was feeling like, man, these people now, now they don't have an excuse. They see my pain. If they don't see anyone else's pain, I know these people have seen me tweeting and posting and speaking out about this. Do they have nothing to say about it? Do, are, they, are they scared of losing followers? What's going on? Um, there was a point when I was scared of losing followers. I'll say that. I'll admit it. And I was, uh, after, after I won Ghost Island two years ago, I, from then on, I kept things kind of neutral. Before that, I'd speak out anywhere against anything. After Ghost Island, I was like, man, I want to get back on this show. I'm going to keep things neutral. Um, but neutral isn't what changes the world. It's not what changes society. It's not what helps people. And after I was on, you know, I got back on the show. All right, cool. So I, there's not, there, I'm not holding my tongue for anyone anymore. So now you'll see me more vocal and speaking out and trying to share these videos and the things that happen. Um, I've seen so many videos during the protests of police running their cars into protesters or police beating the hell out of protesters. And I'm wondering what's going on. Is this, is this freedom of speech press and assembly? Can, can we peacefully protest? And I understand there are some opportunists and there are, are people that will use this time to do things that do not help the cause and loot and things of that nature. But to that, I say a couple things. First and foremost, um, there will always be bad eggs, but I think there are, I think there are people on the extremes. I think there are inciters that come in to do these things, to cause chaos. And I don't think, uh, I don't think it's, it's Black Lives Matter. I do not think that those are the people that incite these, uh, that incite the looting, but also it's, if, if, if you as a people have been beaten down for so long, for 400, since the history of this country, if you as a people have been beaten down and through it's the policies and everything and everything you try to do and you try to, you, to protest, you try to march, you try to do sit-ins, you kneel on a football field, you do these peaceful means and you don't get any attention, I can absolutely understand someone's frustration to where they might want to do something that gets people's attention. So, um, I do not condone looting and violence, but I, I have to say, I understand if a people is not, if, if they're not heard, then they, they're going to do something to be heard. But um, again, so that's like, that's me touching on the looting. But again, the majority of the protests, they're peaceful. And it's a beautiful thing to see so many people coming together, but it's an ugly thing to see their freedom of speech, press and assembly trampled when you have um, a militarized police force in riot gear pushing them back, or when you see on live t TV a news reporter getting arrested. That's the, the freedom of press. When you see them moving people away, uh, reporters with their credentials, holding their credentials out, asking where can, we, where can we report, and you see officers just moving them away or beating the hell out of them. That's, it's a... Uh, 
it's a scary, very slippery slope that we're on. And um, I have yet to be on the front lines. I'm someone that is willing to go out there. I want to go out there, but I also have been getting on podcasts and talking and trying to use my voice. So um, I, I know I'll be out there and I'll probably be one of these guys tear gassed or something like that. But don't say that. Don't say that's what they do to the protesters. Listen, I was, I, we actually have a peaceful protest here in Hoboken on Friday. Um, and we've been talking about it a lot, right? Because we are like, we obviously want to go. I, I want to get out into the world and, and do what you're talking about and be on the front lines. And I do think we're doing a good job of using our platform in the best way possible and using our voice to make, to, you know, make noise, which is what you hope to do. But um, I, I worry my concern is like, obviously with everything Corona and with everything, the way that it es everything's seeming to escalate, peaceful protests move into this craziness. So I, I'm hoping, listen, I wanna go out. What, what would your advice be for people who wanna go out and be part of it? Should you go out and be part of it right now? I feel like yes, right? Yes, you should go out and be part of it. And you should be the change that you wish to see and again, I, I, I can't stress enough that these are peaceful protests. Um, on a large scale, these are very peaceful protests. And I don't- I think we will see that 100%. I think we're gonna see very peaceful. The, the, the police have been very supportive in New Jersey, at least from what I've seen on social media. Uh, no? I. I, I've seen police taking knees with protesters. I've seen police marching with protesters. And I think that that is a step in the right direction. But I see that a lot less than I see other things. I've seen protesters begging and pleading and imploring uh, police or the military men to march with them or walk with them. I think that's the best showing um, that a police force or a military can do. Like, we're with you, we understand there's an issue, and we're gonna symbolically march with you, but also we're actually gonna help fight this with you. So hand in hand, I think, is the way that something like this can be done. But again, with, all, with, with orders to like, I've seen videos of people, I, I posted one on my Instagram the other day, it was a, a brother that was just saying to the police force, I want to know you. I love you. I under I want to understand you. I want you to understand me. He was on a knee saying this stuff. All love. He was sharing only love. And then out of nowhere, five or six guys run up, grab him, snatch him up and bring, bring him behind the um behind the police force. So, when they qu when they when they stomp out the leaders, oh, hold on one second. I got to get something out of the oven. I'm sorry. Are you cooking? Not really. A little bit. I got some chicken in the oven. Wow. But. Cooked anything. I microwaved um, pizza for lunch. That's been my extent. That's been my Corona microwave pizza. Who even knew it was a thing? <laughs> I Well, I, just so I don't digress. Um, there. I think that there are so many instances where if the officers or the military people see someone speaking out, um, they, they grab them up and they arrest them. And that's not, that's not freedom of speech, but it's also, it's not how, it's not how we will understand and want to work hand in hand with, with these people to make, to make a better situation in this country. Um, I think that there are forces trying to divide people, uh, black people from white people, um, a particular group from the police. There's, there are forces trying to divide people. And I think that it's our job to, to make it a point that it's not about division. It's about working hand in hand and trying to find um, our similarities because we have so many more similarities than differences and to try to work together, together to make this better. Um, it's such a miserable time for black Americans right now. If we work together um, I, I, I don't know if people understand that if, if 
black people become better, America becomes better. It's like when the when the when the tide rises, all boat rises, or whatever the um whatever the quote is. If yeah, if if we work together, we will all be better. It will make America better. So I think that we need to find ways to bring people together and because there are a lot of forces trying to create division. I agree with you. I think it is important that we all get out there and we do everything that we possibly can do. I mean, my mom will be marching this Saturday. I think that me and him will be marching Friday in Hoboken. Um, and so if you're in Hoboken, please join Peaceful Protest. What's going on exactly in Philadelphia? What's the, do you have a idea of the schedule? Is it, is it scheduled? Is it not scheduled? I'm not sure what's going on in Philadelphia. They've been, pro they've been protesting every day. Um, Pretty consistently then? Yes. And again, I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's part of this country. Um, and I think that it's something that needs to continue to happen until we see some change. It's not something that needs to be stomped out. It's not a government against protesters. It's a, how about we listen to what's going on? How about we understand why they're protesting instead of saying, no, they can't do this. Um, people have, you got, you, you go to the root of the problem. You don't try to try to, arrest people for protesting, you say, why are they protesting? They're protesting because there's a system, there are many systems since the beginning of the country that have kept a uh, class of people down, that have basically kept a class of people in shackles. And so why don't we try, why don't we find solutions to that problem? Why don't we look at the system? Um, people have been talking about like, um, defunding the police forces and that's something that I, that I think I'm a proponent of and basically if you look at police budgets they're astronomical and budgets for other things are, are much lower like uh, social services and um, you know the arts and homeless services and other things they're they're much lower and you have these huge you have these huge police budgets and now they're driving around in tanks they look like RoboCop. They have all this gear on. And, and what is that really for? And what does that really show? I think when you start cutting, cutting those budgets to put money elsewhere into the arts and into other social services, that's when you can see things change. Um, we, don't need, we don't need this, this police force that looks like video games or something. We need we need people that can reach out and touch people and understand the nuances of different people and speak to those nuances and try to um, just just try to try to I guess when they when they understand a different people or the struggles that that group encounters, then they can I guess effectively police or effectively um, then things can be changed. Interesting. I, I definitely don't know enough about that. And I think that after this, this will be what my next go to uh, education will be on. And I think I, I think that you even bring this up is a really good idea of like, or um, kind of concept of that we get shown the same things over and over and we read a bunch of the same things. And I think we need to educate ourselves on other facets. So I will be looking into that and doing my research and thank you. Um, we've reached over 5k. Yeah, Yay! we've reached five yeah. point. Oh, I'm getting hot too, man. You what? It's hot in here. It's hot in here. I know it's hot here too. What are you drinking, Wendell? What am I drinking? Um, a little wine, apothic. Apothic. apothic red. <laughs> you know, that's my favorite. Yeah, I love it too. Um, I love. Apothic Red and Apothic Inferno also. Love the Apothic Inferno. Yeah. But, you know, um, um, I just wanted to let you know that I have been kind of eyeing this feed as you've been talking. And you have so much support. I know because you are articulating everything, you probably are not able to read um, what, what people are saying. But there are so many people standing behind you and showing support to everything that you're saying. 
and advocating and educating. And like, I just feel like there is such an out, outpouring of um, just people like showing their appreciation to you right now. So well, I, just, I appreciate it. You are, you know, that you're being heard by a lot of people and you're getting like a ton of Thank you. Hearts going while out. I have while while we have this audience, there are a couple things that I do want to touch on. Yes, um, you do. Because when I spoke on Russell Hans podcast, I spoke to people that I don't usually speak to. As far as I don't usually have that audience, he said his audience has his views, and they're like, you know, um, they're kind of within his demographic. So to whomever I'm speaking. Um, there are a couple of things that I want to say, like, first of all, regarding Black Lives Matter, this is not some kind of hate group or anything like that. This means literally that Black Lives Matter. Um, this is not, the, the term itself is not Black people saying that we matter more than anyone or that, um, that all lives don't matter. It's simply saying that in right now, if all lives matter, then we need to focus on a group that is being that is that is that is being marginalized and that is being brutalized so all lives truly can matter that's why we're saying hey yes er it is a given that all lives do matter but this group of lives is is there's no attention there and there's a lot of problems going on systemically with this group of people so let's just remind you guys that that this group matters as well so we can all matter so when it comes to black lives matter and people saying black lives matter and why it's so harmful when someone says all lives matter in response to that it's because of it's because of that and a, a very plain analogy that you probably probably have seen is a graphic of someone a firefighter shooting water on a house that is burning down and the neighbor with a house that is not burning down is saying, hey, all houses matter. We get it, yes, all houses do matter, but this house is burning down and it needs immediate attention. So when people say black lives matter, please don't respond with all lives matter. Just understand, hey, look, you know what? This group of people, they need particular attention and maybe I will listen and understand and echo their sentiment that black lives do matter and it won't be until we hold black lives at the same standard as all other lives that all lives will truly matter. I love that. I think that that is a great way of putting it. I've seen a lot of um, all lives matter. And I know that there has been some, um, you know, controversy over that. And I do, I hear what you're saying. I think you're right. I think, of course, all lives matter, of course. But right now, black, the black community needs us and we need to focus our attention there. And, um, by the way, you bring up that that um, podcast. I will actually post it in my story and link it because I Thank did that driver specialist. And if there's anything that maybe we missed, then maybe that's something that you touched on there. So I want to make sure that all of the followers have all of the resources um, that you have spoken out upon this. So I will link it in my story and you can catch it there after this. Thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. Um, but I know you had mentioned that you, we have five minutes left and we are almost at 6,000. And I think we might hit, I feel like we're gonna. Wow. Um, but I don't know if there's anything else that you kind of want to touch on while we have you here. You have a huge platform. We've reached thousands of people so far today. So. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions that you have, Kim? Um, is there anything? I think that it's it's good that we're just talking. Um, if I could speak to the people, it's it's a matter of, of not being scared to have uncomfortable di uh, discourse and dialogue. It's a matter of opening yourself up. Um, as a white person, it's a matter of definitely listening and trying to understand the pain that we feel literally every single day. It's hard for me to sleep at night. Um, it's, it's, it's very difficult. I feel like a weight is on me. I literally, when I run, that, that's my refuge when I take a morning jog. Um, so, but it's about having uncomfortable conversations and looking at people that don't necessarily look like you and being willing to speak that 
And as an ally, um, I understand that you might not know what to say. Um, you might not know what to do. You can do your research or Michelle, I remember you were texting me like, Hey, is this, how does this sound? And I, I wanted to help you out because I understand you're coming from a good place and you're, you're, you're good right here. So as long as you are good in your heart, there might be people, there are always people that are going to say things like, uh, um, maybe, maybe a white person who has yet to understand might say, oh, why are you saying Black Lives Matter? Uh, that's, not, that's not how we do it where we're from. Or maybe a black person might see what you're saying as a white person and say, oh, white, white girl, white boy, you don't know what you're talking about. You can't, you can't let those voices discourage you. You can't. You can't let any of the hate or any of the people that don't see from your perspective um, discourage you from speaking out. If you see something wrong, you have to do something about it. If you, if you want to speak, then speak and speak up and it's gonna help us all. It certainly will. Oh my God, thank you so much. This has been, oh. <laughs> stop. I'm like overly emotional. It's been just a crazy few months, a crazy two weeks, whatever it is. It's been really, oh my God. It's just been, it's been, um, yeah. It's been, it's been tough. I'm really so grateful that you were able to come on. We raised a ton of money for a good cause, really. And so thank you so much. You have been just such a pillar of like grace. And I, I, I do check in with you and look to you for just guidance on how to navigate this. And I think we should all look towards each other on how to navigate this crazy situation. And this really, it's just been, um, a challenging time and hopefully we can do all that we can to support each other through it and and make a better world coming out of coming out of this togetherness so, that's Mark, it it's friday in hoboken i hope to see you all out there um and if there's anything you want to say yeah just um guys together do it together don't look at someone that that looks different than you and think other um, think that their differences make them beautiful or a beautiful person or a beautiful human. The only way that, um, that we can make this thing happen is, is if we work together. And that's how this country can become better. It can't just be black people speaking about them being the marginalized class. Um, it has to be external forces. Um, we absolutely appreciate all allies that are willing to help out. I thank you, Michelle. I thank you, Kim. Um, and I thank everybody that's willing to help. Hugs to everybody. Big Aww. hug, Wendell. <laughs> Bring it in. We, I, I could help you. <laughs> all right. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you, everybody who donated. And hopefully we can keep the conversation going. And if you have any educational pieces or uh, foundations that you would like to draw us to draw attention to, please forward them to us. We can always learn and we can always pass on the knowledge and hopefully use our platform to just make this world better. So um, send it forward. We're open, open eyes, open ears, and um, we're here for you. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you, Wendell. Bye. You're very welcome. <laughs>